Let's Make It is brought to you by Ting, the new way everyone is getting their cell service. No overage penalties, great rates, keep what you do not use, no contracts, and someone will actually pick up the phone when you need support. Use our link and get $25 off your first month's service or your new phone. Just go to tech-zen.tv slash ting to save $25. Hello, and it's that time again on Monday. It's 9 p.m. It is time for another Let's Make It. This is episode number 43, recorded on November 11th, 2013. And this week, I kind of didn't get exactly what I was going to do this week. I, I have one of the things. I had two things I was going to do. And I'm going to show you the second one, and I'm going to explain a little bit why I didn't get done. Uh, hopefully, I have it done for next week, and I can show it to you next week uh, when I get some parts. So we're going to talk about some little things like that in the beginning here. And then in the second half of the show, we're going to talk about how you can write things into the EEPROM on your Arduino. So when you unplug it or turn it off uh, or reset it, whatever, and you go back and your program starts running again, the same information you had before can be retrieved. It's something that's built into every Arduino. Every one is a little bit different as far as its size. But like the Omega that I'm going to show it on has a 4K EEPROM area. So you can store up to 4,000 uh, bytes of information into that EEPROM and then when you restart it and turn it back, plug it back in, whatever reload, you can re-upload a sketch it won't forget the stuff that you put in the EEPROM, you can just pull it back out again so that's the second part of our show but we're going to start out a little bit here this morning and I first want to say I've been getting a lot more emails and I really do appreciate them I wanted to uh, call out a few of those because I'm just a little bit behind on getting to some of them and, and Bob's been out and he may still join today, I don't know uh, I sent him an email earlier asking how things were going and making sure his move went okay. And it seems like he's pretty much moved. He said he might be able to join tonight. So he's kind of in my ears if I hear him come in and I'll, I'll pop him uh, onto the show. But for right now, he's not here. He may come back in and we'll just check in with him. But he's still doing okay. All right. So I got a couple things today. I got uh, a new show idea uh, from Sam from France. And we're going to... Um, go through here and maybe try to do this in the next week or so as well. So he gives some ideas. And then I also got one today from uh, Marius Johannesson. And he wants he talks about some IR stuff that we're going to maybe go back and revisit IR again and try to help him out with some of his uh, things with that. Um, I've had a couple of people say there are a couple of things missing on the downloads, and that is possible. Uh, I got one from uh, uh, Victoria Levy and... I am going, I'm working on getting that fixed. The person who normally does that for me is my outsourcer, and she lives in the Philippines. Of course, if you're sure you've heard the news, uh, the Philippines get hit pretty hard. I've tried to contact her, and I haven't been able to get anything back from her. So I'll go out and do this myself. Uh, just kind of keep uh, her in your thoughts, because I don't know exactly where she lived in the Philippines and how hard she got hit. Maybe she's just out of power. I don't know all the details around uh, what her current status is. So I'm a little concerned about her, and I hope she's doing fine. Um, okay, let's see what else do I have here. So I had something from Colin. I'm, I'm going to really mess up your back, your last name, and I'm sorry. Uh, it's Maganga, M-A-G-A-N-G-A, -G -G -A, about uh, some Zigbee. And I just haven't gotten back to it yet. I'm sorry. I'm still, I think I replied to you once uh, or forwarded it to Bob. I can't tell which one I did here, but I will get back to you. You're still in my list. All these people are marked to be followed up on. I'm just that far behind. And that's kind of why I want to let everybody know, you know, we're still working on it. Uh, as you've known, we've been making some changes around here, uh, as far as how the studio is configured. In fact, tonight's a little bit weird because, um, things are in a really middle state of flux. I have officially switched off of, uh, the main wirecast machine to a Windows machine. So I have a keyboard here for that. Plus, I'm still switching off the old hardware because I don't want to have um, the code, the C sharp code completely working to use just this yet. Hopefully, by next week, I get that done. So it's just been a little mixed up with things going on around here uh, recently. So just a little bit behind on things. Of course, it's kind of normal, it seems like, because we keep uh, ourselves pretty busy. Uh, one exciting thing is I should have in the next couple of days the finished. First finished case of the switcher. I'm still using my uh, my prototype system that I built, uh, but all the drawings have come back, and I've given them the approval to go ahead and make some of the prototypes for the the physical switcher. So I should be able to get that back in soon, make it look like a real a real product. So maybe by next week I'll be able to show you show you that as well. So before I came into the studio tonight, I went out and looked at my front porch, and I had a package sitting out there, and it was from uh it wasn't China. It actually came from. I actually don't remember where it came from, but somewhere over there. 
But I got excited because it, I, the bigger switcher that we're designing now, I want to use a, a touchscreen interface. And this was sitting, it was, it was in a box, obviously. This was sitting on my front porch. So I'm all excited to try this out. This is a 7-inch uh, LCD touchscreen. And I'm really looking forward uh, to trying it out. You know, I can put it over here and you can kind of see. So uh, with the smaller switchers, we're actually going to use rotary knobs and push buttons to, to go through a menu. But my whole goal is to be able to use something like this as a touchscreen interface. Um, some of the switchers that are out there use the smart buttons uh, and give you the one, the, for example, one for the ATEM. They have 12 smart buttons. Well, if I buy 12 smart buttons at $65 a piece, this is only $66. So this can save money. Plus, I can make the menu just as flexible as using the 12 smart buttons by using a touchscreen. So that's that was kind of my idea uh, behind using the touchscreen. But I got all excited. I didn't expect it because it was coming from overseas to come so fast because most of the time uh, things come very slow from from China or over in that area. And uh, I, was, I was just very, very surprised. So I did find some new buttons that are on their way. Uh, well, they shipped yet. It's supposed to ship sometime this week, I believe. Um, I ordered them like three weeks ago, and it takes three weeks to get my order out. So, uh, but they're going to ship using the same method as this. So, uh, hopefully, I get it. You know, sometime next week. And next, I'm really excited because the buttons are like a quarter of the cost, and they apparently have the same uh, design as an NKK switch. So I should be able to replace them without any changes to the borders of what I currently have. And uh, actually, the the ones that are a quarter of the price are RGB. The ones that are two color are even less than that price. So I'm um, getting a little excited about finding some uh, other alternatives to the high priced buttons uh, for these things. So the other thing you saw sitting here next to where the dis display was, was this silver bag. And I actually got these this week too. And this is what tonight's product was gonna be. Until I realized I didn't have a transistor that was powerful enough to be able to handle this. So let me show you what this is. And we've kind of played with things like this before, but this is a 50 foot roll of RGB LEDs. And you can see there's four, four wires right here on the plug. Um, let me go really back to the overhead here. Um, you can see there's uh, red, green, blue, and white, white being the common, and then two plugs. And you can see on here, there's a ton of these little, uh, it's a little bright to see them, but they're tricolor LEDs right there. And these are things I got behind my monitor. We did that little thing with the remote control before. Uh, and part of the issue I have is the ones behind my monitor, they blink. So to get around and fix that particular problem, what I've done, and I haven't proven this actually to work yet, is I have gotten some controllers that are controlled by DMX. And in the process of, of thinking about that, I thought, well, this would be a good thing for a show, is what if I show people how to write code in an Arduino to control these strips. And it's actually very simple. It requires a couple additional parts, things we haven't really talked about before. Uh, it requires transistors because you got a lot more power. These are actually 12 volt LEDs and they require you know quite a bit more power than what the Arduino can put out and not just voltage wise, but in, in uh, amperage and watt wise as well. So uh, we're going to have to show you and demonstrate how to use transistors. I think we've demonstrated that before with relays, but we never really talked about it very much. And these have to be fairly powerful uh, to run this whole this whole strip. The strip uh, one color can run on about an amp, but if you're running all three colors, it's like three amps of power to run this 50 foot roll of LEDs. So we need to make sure that we can 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 do that. And we it's very simple to do, it's pulse width modulation. We talked about uh, multicolor LEDs before, and it's exactly the same. Just instead of running an LED, you're going to a transistor that runs to a bunch of LEDs that's on this roll. Um, but that was what I was going to try to do tonight in addition to the EEPROM. But when I went searching for transistors, transistors, I found some, but I didn't find some that would be powerful enough to run this whole strip. So I didn't want to cut the strip up. Although I got uh, four or five rolls of this now uh, for some things around here that I want to do with it. And soon you'll start seeing that kind of stuff show up around in here as well. So those that was the stuff I want to talk about before I really got into the, the EEPROM stuff. And like I said, tonight's show is going to be actually rather quick because the EEPROM stuff is very, very simple. Um, and we actually use it quite a bit now with the switching stuff that we've been doing because when we turn the switcher off, you want to, you don't want to tell it where the ATEM is or, or where your computer is. You want to turn it back on again. So we uh, do a lot of configuration storage in these areas. And what I want to do before I, I get into that, uh, I want to jump over and 
you know, thank our, our sponsors and everything uh, for the night. So real quickly, I'm going to hop over there and we'll be back in, in one second. You work hard for your business. Your website should too. No matter what industry you're in, select your customizable high quality design with professionally written content and graphic elements created for your business. Make changes online whenever you like. Switch your background color, page layout, and text anytime. Add your pictures and logo. Upgrade your website with useful one-in-one -on -one web apps and integrate social media. Upload your photo albums and embed videos. With one click, optimize your website for viewing on mobile devices. Choose your free domain or you can easily transfer an existing one. Thanks to one in ones SEO tools, customers can find you everywhere. one in one My Website, a professional website created by you. When you open up an Audible audiobook, it opens up your imagination. Enjoy a steamy romance while ironing the sheets. Discover an historic battle while battling the bulge at the gym. Visit audible.com slash free books now to try two books absolutely free. Get caught up in a whodunit during a do-it-yourself project. Listen anytime, anywhere with the Audible mobile app. When you're out for a walk, learn how to climb the corporate ladder. Or bring a little magic to your minivan with a fantasy novel. With over 100,000 titles, Audible is an amazing experience that you can now try absolutely free. And just like our books, there's no binding. Our great listen guarantee lets you exchange a title you don't like for another. No questions asked. Visit audible.com slash free books to download two books of your choice right now. We want to uh, thank our sponsors. We uh, the show would be a little harder to put on because they are helping to fund some of the things that we do on the show and some of the parts that we we use and get in. So uh, if you have an interest in um, any of the products that we're we're promoting there, there's always a link and everything. Go to that, and when you go to there, we get a list a little bit of uh, money from the, uh, the sale of that stuff. All right. So before I go too far, what I want to do is I want to hop over here. Uh, to the computer. of how much space is available uh, to write to. So what I have done is I've created a program that's going to write some things to memory and we're going to read it, uh, read it back. And you're going to see, I'm going to unplug it. And, you're, and uh, just to give you a real quick uh, overview of that, all I'm doing is I'm using Omega and nothing attached to it. 
it's just sitting here. All I'm going to do is use it to write to the EEPROM. So nothing special about the Mega. No wiring, anything special needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over here to uh, the Arduino code. And we're going to go through the EEPROM right first. So let me get in here. And let me go back over. The actual, where is it? Let me get back to it here. If we look at the actual board, you see nothing special going on at all. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. Um, well, so it it did this, and we're done with programming. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the computer real quick. Okay, so what you see now on the screen is the Arduino, and you see the scrolling of the Let's Make It. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. You notice the scrolling stops. So the Arduino has no more power. It's powerless, not plugged in. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in. And you're going to start seeing, well, it's not starting back up. Let me restart back up the serial port. And there you see it's coming back out. Let's make it all over again. So if we go back and we look 
at the action. very um quick week because it's e problems very easy and my my thing that's going to have fun with didn't i don't have the parts yet so uh we'll have some fun with the with the keller strips next week so um i think maybe bob is around he he is uh, in the chat room at least um let's see i didn't hear him call into skype one Let me see if he'll answer me. Oh, well, I need to do this first. Well, <clears throat> I can't call him. It's telling me he's not available. Although it shows him as being available, but it's not its not available. So uh, if you're listening, Bob, why don't you try calling me again? Because it seems like it's something on your side. Let me do a real quick test just to, before I say it's your side. Do you hear me? I don't hear you. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob. I'm not hearing you. But I hear other Skype sounds, so I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I can... Okay, I got you now. What'd you do? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> all I did was check all the wiring to make sure I was plugged in correctly. And I it, was. it says that your your bandwidth quality is really low. Oh. My wife is probably watching Netflix. It's actually it's red now. It was yellow. Actually it's telling me that it's really it now it popped up and told me that. Turn off video for better sound quality. I didn't have a problem with your sound. Your video was breaking up. 
So how you doing? Did you get all moved? Doing good. I'm sorry, say that again. Did you get all moved? I am. We are moved now. My office is in a little bit of disarray, but... Didn't, and we didn't break anything, so... Well, that's good. So you see we've been getting a lot of emails recently, right? Yes, we did. And one of them I found uh, really interesting. Um, let me get back to it. Um, Which microphone are you using, by the way? I'm on my Logitech because I had to get it. I had to get on real fast. It sounds like you're on something else. No, it's the it's the Logitech headset. It's probably the quality on Skype. It could be just really, really quiet. You're, you don't have much body to it. That's why I wasn't sure. Okay. Maybe that. Maybe that'll help. It almost sounds like you're using like a, the built-in mic or something. That's why I was asking. No, I don't think so. Now I'm on the, I'm on the headset. Well, that's, yeah, I, I did find, yeah, the, the email we got, um, about the buck boost converter that was I, boy i haven't thought about those in years so yeah i'm not sure i've actually ever used or ever made one or used one you know uh, the la in my i mean i studied them in school um of course if you'd asked me what you know i couldn't have told you how they work but I, I, you know, in my professional life, I, I bet it's been eight or ten years, and I vaguely remember a microcontroller that came through my group uh, when I was at ST Microelectronics that had a buck boost converter in it, and I didn't actually work on the chip, but I remember it coming by, and they were doing something with a USB. Uh, you know, where they were powering the device off a of USB, but um, it's it's not something that uh, that's used very often anymore, I don't think. Um, I sure haven't needed one or used one or thought about it very often, but kind of makes you, you know, what, come up with something interesting, so. Right, right, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so we got like what two emails today that i haven't responded to yet in fact in early in the show i went through a couple of emails and kind of apologized people haven't gotten to them yet because just been kind of busy crazy busy <laughs> well and i got a and, and then we had the other one about the calculator uh, right but i haven't had a chance i read the email but i have not had a chance to look at the code yet oh yeah i didn't either it's on my list to do probably in the next day or so to look through it and then I don't, um, I think this one came to me personally. Uh, six months ago, I found a, a video about an Arduino oscilloscope that I thought was really good. Emailed the guy who, who did it. Well, he finally, he finally responded six months later. So, and sent, sent the link to the code. So I, I'll have to forward that to you. And I'm, I may go back to an Arduino oscilloscope, which is something I we I toyed with a couple months ago and never really found a good, you know, a good solution. You know, didn't find something that worked well for me. But uh, I think I'm going to revisit that topic. That'd be cool. That'd be a cool show to do too. Yeah, I would did want to ask you. Do you, you know people have been asking a little bit about timers too? Um, do you want to do a segment on timers? You have a little more experience with them than what I do. Um, yeah, uh, we we could do a quick segment. Uh, yeah, we yeah we could do something on timers next couple of weeks sometime. Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's plan on that because I do have that the real time clock chip also that I got uh, from Bob, or not from Bob, but from um, oh, this one completely out of my head. I squared C guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> John, John, John Hall. John. Sorry, John. <laughs> <You're watching. laughs> um, I did get that to work, so it'd be kind of neat to show the real time clock as well. I've been meaning to do okay. that in the show. I just haven't. It's sitting on my desk. We're waiting to do it. And I should have done it tonight. No, when I realized I didn't have all the parts to do one other thing tonight, I was gonna probably should have just grabbed it and went. 
Well, uh, later we can talk about what we'd like to do with uh, timers and uh, what a good demonstration would be. Or if somebody's watching this show and has an idea that they can get to us this week, you know, yeah. or how, how, how you'd like a timer demonstrated. Right, if you have a particular need for a timer or something. Yeah. And I guess doing just doing something where we demo, you know, a, a good old 555 timer. You know, we really can't go wrong there. Right, right. I mean, they're so flexible and used everywhere, so. Yeah, uh, last week I did, last week, week before, I can't remember right now. <laughs> it's all run together. I did a countdown timer, I think it was last week. And um, I just used the, you know, the one the 1,000 millisecond, well, I did 100 milliseconds wait. And um, did, a, you know, loop around then. So I used, the, I used the Arduino's looping timer to do it. But, you know, that's not overly accurate. It's fine for most things, but it'd be nice to be able to do some kind of interrupt timer, maybe, for that. Yeah. Well, we could do, you know, we, I mean, we've, we've looked at, we've done a couple things where we look at the interrupts timer on the Arduino, but, a, you know, an external timer we've, we've never touched before. We've right. We've never talked about before. Right. So, yeah, we can do a, we can do a timer. That'll be interesting. Okay. Well, I don't have anything else for tonight, but it's nice to hear from you again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice to be uh, back. Uh, last, you know, moving can be. Um, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just assume not move for 10 more years. Yep. So. I know that feeling. <laughs> we're still, we're actually, we're still unpacking from our, from our move. Uh, not this past March, but the March before. So we have a storage area. The boxes are still labeled like wh wh what they are, and we're slowly taking things out of them and putting them into containers that are you know labeled. The clear containers that are labeled. <laughs> so as we get time, we go back here and spend an hour or two, and you know we're still undoing all that stuff. So it's I don't understand completely. Well, in our condo, the the light, it, the you know we pretty much have all the boxes unpacked. Uh, we do have storage that. Yeah, it's storage, and uh, when we when I first logged in, it, it was obvious that I need to do something with the lighting because my office area, the the light in the camera is not is not good. But I'll work on that this week. That's okay. I got a mess going on here too. So, all right. Well, I'm sorry I was late, but. No, that's okay. It's good to hear from you. We'll make sure things are going okay. <laughs> I hadn't heard yeah, from you for a while. It's, go it, it's, it's going all right. I, I know how moving is, so I, did, I wasn't going to bother you and keep keep bugging you about it. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll, we'll see everybody next week. Good night. Night. <laughs>